Hi, so, uh, yes, call has started again, uh, a week ago, around the bay, and I didn't really like it when I was in 5th grade, however now I am in 6th grade, and it has become quite a bit more fun because I have something to look forward to, the diploma that leads me to the end of my school career, right? Well, I do think I'm going to study data science at the universities of Eindhoven and Tilburg, after my career, so, uh, it's pretty alright that today I'm going to be talking about why the education system as we know it today is useless, so let me disclaim first. I am not advocating for you to quit school this very instant, rather, I am talking about continuing the education system as it is right now, and how it is useless, uh, unhealthy for children, morally evil, environmentally unfriendly and outright dangerous for national security. So let's continue here. Also I am only talking about primary and secondary education. Of course universities and private courses have their own uses and if you're interested in them go ahead and take them. So to start off let's talk about this thing called motivation. Well there are actually two related things, intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Uh, intrinsic motivation is motivation that comes out of oneself, one's own interest or one's desire to pursue a certain goal, whilst extrinsic motivation comes solely out of rewards and punishments to the person given by a third party. Uh, that third party could be a school teacher, parents or really anyone, uh, as long as it is clear. Now, intrinsic motivation always takes priority over extrinsic motivation, as in some will be more motivated to do something that they are interested in than something they are coerced to do. And this is true across the board, there is no period in which coercion is better for a child than freedom. In other words, there is no period in time in which it is better to force a child to learn than it is to simply let the child free to learn in their own way, with their own pace, whatever they want. And in fact, several studies have shown that extrinsic motivation can take away intrinsic motivation, i.e. when a child uh, does something by themselves and yet all of a sudden someone offers something to the child uh, in exchange for what they've done, they will do less uh, because they are no longer thinking about their own interest but rather about what the other person is thinking about whether or not they'll get that reward. And in fact all of that coercion from outside is putting immense stress on the child. And all that stress can literally cause a mental breakdown or panic attacks in children. It has to be shown that even the youngest of children are more stressful when they go into school than they are before they go to school. And that is all because uh, of that extrinsic motivation. And all of that stress uh, can eventually even lead into uh, chronic stress, depression or even suicide. Uh, yes, the uh, suicidal rate of teens has been falsely accused on social media, but why are they spending so much time on social media? To distract themselves from the real cause, which is all the stress they have gone through at school. And that is what's leading to those teenagers seeking distractions and uh, effectively they get addicted at things that we see as perfectly normal entertainment just because it allows them to escape from the real world from what they really have to do. Speaking of that it is really just preparing for the test, preparing for the test and preparing for the test and that kind of bullshit is leading uh, to short term learning. Students find it easier to just learn for the short term for the test rather than actually taking time to go in depth and examine all the material and all of what we've learned for the test will be forgotten uh, before or after the test and uh, that is just such a waste of energy just doing something for a test and then forgetting it afterwards meanwhile if you learn out of intrinsic motivation uh, you are in control of your own uh, destiny and you uh, what you learn you will pick up and you're getting unforgettable memories about it. And 
you actually like it and find it fun and interesting by itself. You don't need to distract yourself from the learning process. In fact, you enjoy the learning process itself. And I should say you do not need a psychologist, a pediatrician, or any kind of scientist to tell you that. Just speak about anyone's or even your own personal experiences and you will realise that intrinsic motivation is just so powerful. And our current coercive education system does not account for that at all, as pretentious as it might be. Now here's a great example of how extrinsic motivation takes the fun out of something intrinsically fun. Uh, like reading. Uh, I learned to read when I was about age 3 or 4. Uh, but and I read so much during my childhood. I actually enjoyed it as far as I could remember. But then in uh, secondary school, all of a sudden, all those assignments came in, which forced me uh, to read for a uh, test. And then I would receive a grade based on how much I uh, quote unquote comprehended the book. Well, I didn't. I just comprehended some summaries to get around the reading itself. And mm, yes, uh, we are living in a dystopia therefore, but we're not living in something like Fahrenheit 451 where books are burned. We are living in brave and new world where uh, learning is associated with so many things that are not fun that you simply no longer have a desire to read. Well that desire will recover once you're out of school and allowed to read whatever you want. Uh, it's just still quite a bit of time uh, wasted and the same thing happens in pretty much everything that is mandatory. If a child found it fun beforehand all that fun will be taken out of it. So a place where you are forced to do whatever someone tells you and the threats of uh, disciplinary action where you cannot escape that sounds an awful lot like a prison. Not just to me, but also to so many other children. In fact, I've heard a very young child when I was walking one day, uh, I asked her how school was, and she said it was like a prison. And that is because basically it is. Uh, yeah. The only difference being that we send people to prison who committed a severely atrocious crime, but we send people to school only because they're between certain ages and then ask questions later. That is just morally evil. We have agreed so long ago that coercing someone, anyone, to work, uh, except if they are duly convicted of a crime, is morally evil. And effectively, what our schools are doing now is coercing children to work whilst they have not been duly convicted of a crime. That makes school effectively morally evil. And it isn't just that, there are also so many environmental issues with school. As I said before, assignments have to be made, homework has to be done, tests have to be taken, and they all are not made out of nothing. It's just paper that might have been better used to create a proper book about a particular topic uh, that goes in depth in the way a child wants it to be. In other words, it's just one big paper waste. And not just that, also of uh, energy. Like, just think about how much energy children are using to uh, cope with a system, to catch up, when all that energy could have really been used to be themselves and to learn what they want to learn. Yeah, that's just not just true about energy, but also about time and water. Another two very scarce resources on our planet. Don't just look at that. Also look at the school buildings themselves, in which these children with their books reside. Like, that school building isn't going to build itself. Uh, and what about how to heat it in the winter or cool it down in the summer when it has to be so big? Meanwhile, if you were to just put a bunch of kids and teens together and let them do whatever they want, the building probably has to be quite a bit smaller. Uh, because you're not dealing with uh, classrooms and stuff like that and all the administrative bullshit that's going on in the background just to make sure that the kids are complying and that the school is doing their work great, aka to fulfil PR requirements. 
and all of that administration and other kinds of energy waste isn't just present in the school itself, also all the regulatory bullshit that is going on uh, just to make sure that kids are attending is a huge waste of uh, paper, energy and money. When all that could just be struck into improving the education system as it is or maybe solving some kind of national uh, crisis or maybe even improving certain kinds of technologies that allow it to become more sustainable in the long term or maybe even giving everyone a basic income. And so in order to save face one of the best things we could do is improve our education system. One time on Reddit, in case you don't know, I have written about a proposal of the ultimate education system that isn't. It's solely based around intrinsic motivation and I'm going to read it to you now. Now, so many people want to improve the education system but governmental actions now just lead to more things in the curriculum. Never is there any thought about what makes the system. Never does anyone in politics say the truth. Even the youngest of children are hardwired to learning freedom. There's no period in which coercion is better for the child than freedom. The ability and desire for children to self-learn doesn't disappear until and unless someone coerces them. Therefore, it is best to ban all coercion of children. All current elements of education, like the curriculum, fixed location, predetermined scheduled classes and compulsory attendance, should be removed. Children should be allowed to learn and do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, whatever they want wherever they want, with whomever they want, as long as they don't hurt themselves or others. In other words, the entire world should be seen as one big school. They still need to be places where materials are concentrated so children can find them more easily. These places should be open to everyone regardless of their age, religion or race. Everyone should be given the same opportunities and the choice to take from wherever in their life. Children will this way learn what they are truly interested in, leading to deep interconnected memories based primarily on true experiences what they see, hear, smell, taste and do. This leads to an immediate acceleration of the learning process. What takes forever for a child when forced to do goes much quicker if done solely out of a child's own interest. This of course leads children to finding pl pleasure in learning instead of despising school and becoming independent individuals. Now if someone said this was pretty uh, comparable to a glass of quality school which I don't quite know anything about but let me tell you there are in fact experiments with uh, more freer kinds of education but they all failed on one virtual being way too expensive for parents to afford and therefore the government should step in to ban all coercion of children and to build places for them to do whatever they want and become whatever they want to become. Speaking of that costs, our coercive education system also costs so much for the government to maintain and what the government pays is ultimately paid for by the taxpayer. The education system as described before uh, is probably going to be much cheaper for a government to run and operate including all the logistics that are needed for on-demand goods and such. Especially when considering one final thing, one thing that breaks everything of our coercive education system. It is a thing that I could have started the video with and called it a day. It will one day lead to an intergenerational rivalry that is unwinnable for adults. Have you noticed something on the street or in the news? Yes, I did. I did notice quite a lot of gang violence. Uh, I really see that as a precursor to a potential war between kids and adults. So I did talk about the possibility of children rising up against adults but should I tell you it's already sort of happening right now or at least uh, youths are preparing for it and at younger and younger ages. If this trend were to progress we could probably see an actual war between kids and adults one day. I couldn't really predict when and it's a real pain in the neck. Let's see why. So imagine we have a thousand adults and 300 children. I, uh, in a video I made about the possibility of children rising up, I used a pretty small numbers just for a reason. Back then I imagined if it were like 10 adults against two children, uh, the children would definitely lose. But in this case of a thousand versus 300 for example, I could definitely imagine that it would still be unwinnable for adults. 
the first set of adults will probably surrender out of pity. Uh, they think these children must have a reason to fight and they should give it to them. Uh, like, let's imagine that's 500 adults. Now we're left with 500 against 300. And the children would start taking on the adults and realize that's pretty hard to do. But one day, one of those kids would end up with a very clever idea to take down as many adults as possible at once. Once it's shown to the adults, it doesn't even matter if it works or not, just the fear of being uh, wiped out at once is basically going to cause a lot of adults to surrender if it weren't uh, out of pity. Uh, let's say that number is 2. 300 and now we have 200 adults versus 300 children which is very easy for the children to win especially considering that an adult surrendering is basically an adult who is then forced to work for the children so the children basically just sort of reverse the balance of power imagine these kind of fight happening across the entire world and if it weren't for a global ecological collapse or a global nuclear war or an asteroid impact this is where the world as we know it would end this would be the downfall of adult society and the only way to win this war would be to surrender before it even has the potential to start now all of these together, the uh, mental health issues, the immense inefficiency of learning through the coercive education system, the environmental impacts, the huge costs and potential for security issues, basically mean we should abandon the coercive education system as it is right now. Now we should realise it is actually very old, over 100 years old, and it would have served a purpose back in the Industrial Revolution, but that purpose has long been surpassed. So it's time to move on. We are always saying just give these children a chance. Uh, we say that kids who can't go to school for whatever reason should be able to. I agree with that but not at any cost, personal or otherwise. You might think that education is important but what I think is really important is the ability of a child to decide of what they want to learn in the education system. The ability of a child to decide who will be their truest friends. In fact, even the ability of a child to decide where the next step should be taken, that will make them into true, responsible and self-determining adults. See you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.